slippery, slimy, gooey, hardly words you'd think of when describing your medicine, but this exactly describes marshmallow roots benefits. Marshmallow, something you may associate with campfires, chocolate, and graham crackers, is also a plant, Althea officinalis. And it's one of our most healing and soothing medicinal herbs. In this episode, I'm showing you exactly how to make a marshmallow root tea recipe for the best marshmallow root benefits. I'll show you how making this tea is so easy, you don't even have to heat up the water. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. For those of you watching on YouTube, you can see I'm standing next to this huge marshmallow plant in my garden. I love to watch this grow from the ground up each year and then get covered in these simple white blooms that attract all sorts of pollinators, including many native bees. Like many herbs, marshmallow has a long history of use. While historical records show it was used as long as 2000 years ago, it was undoubtedly used for thousands of years before that, both as a food and as a potent healing medicine. The genus name for marshmallow is derived from the Greek word altho, which means to cure, thereby giving us a great indication of how highly regarded this althea plant was in ancient times. Marshmallow or althea officinalis is closely related to many other types of mallow, such as common mallow or malva neglecta. These plants are often worked with interchangeably. Pliny, a revered herbalist in ancient times wrote, Whosoever shall take a spoonful of the mallow shall that day be free from all diseases that may come to him. Probably a bit of an exaggeration, but I love his enthusiasm for marshmallow. Marshmallow is a popular plant too. Do you have experience with the marshmallow root benefits? Do you love marshmallow root tea? Or are you trying it for the first time? I'd love to hear about it in the comments on YouTube or on the official podcast page, herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Your comments mean a lot to me because I love cultivating a community of kind-hearted, plant-loving folks. Plus, it's always interesting and insightful to hear the experiences of plant lovers out there. And you never know, your suggestion may also help others. Okay, let's dive in. Marshmallow energetics. Marshmallow root teas are slimy, slippery, and gooey, which admittedly may not sound super pleasant, but it's exactly what you need when you are dealing with heat, irritation, and dryness. Think of how soothing fresh aloe gel can feel on a sunburn. That's what marshmallow can do, but it's more typically used for dryness and irritation in the throat and lungs, as well as the digestive and urinary tracts. The soothing, cooling, and moistening action is called demulcent. And marshmallow is revered in the herbal world for being an incredibly demulcent herb. If you're not immediately familiar with the demulcent action, I'm still certain it's something you've experienced. Think of an old bowl of oatmeal and how it becomes thick and gooey. That's demulcent. Demulcent herbs are filled with polysaccharides, which are long chain carbohydrates that become thick and viscous when soaked in water. The resulting brews of demulcent herbs are used to soothe hot and inflamed tissues. There are thousands of different reasons for which you could use a demulcent preparation, ranging from ulcers and burns to dry coughs and inflamed tissues. One of the best applications for demulcent herbs is to address inflammation caused by dryness. This is such a powerful way of working with herbs because instead of simply trying to suppress inflammation, as is commonly done in Western medicine, the demulcent action treats the actual dryness, helping to reverse this particular type of chronic inflammation. 
If you'd like to know how to work with herbs holistically to support your health from the ground up, then definitely check out my free training, How to Use Herbs to Transform Your Health to Get More Energy and Vitality Without Expensive Supplements or a Restrictive Elimination Diet. You can access this free training at herb-training.com or visit the show notes. Marshmallow for the urinary tract. If you have a hot sunburn or other dry, irritated skin, then it makes sense that a soothing, demulcent herb placed directly on those tissues will help to relieve any pain and discomfort. But one marshmallow root benefit is that it also works systemically in kind of mysterious ways. Herbalists commonly use marshmallow for hot and irritated conditions in the lungs and urinary system, even though marshmallow never comes into direct contact with those tissues. My friend and fellow herbalist, Jim McDonald, explains. Though it makes sense that demulcents coat tissues, the physical mucilage is actually very poorly absorbed by the body and certainly isn't traveling through the blood to the kidneys. Rather, the ingestion of mucilage seems to promote a systemic moistening of tissues throughout the body, with some demulcents being more specific to a particular organ system. As a result, marshmallow frequently gets used for hot and painful urinary problems such as cystitis, kidney stones, and UTIs. Besides being a demulcent specific to the urinary tract, it's also a diuretic, which can be a further aid in many urinary problems. Marshmallow for the cold and flu season. Marshmallow is a wonderful ally for the cold and flu season, especially for its ability to soothe an inflamed and sore throat. However, Marshmallow goes beyond simply addressing a tissue state. It also stimulates phagocytosis, an important action of the immune system, where phagocyte cells chomp on pathogens and waste material in the body to help clean it up. Marshmallow is commonly used as a simple or in formulas to address dry and irritated lungs, which can result in spasmodic or hacking coughs or coughs with little to no expectoration. A review of the literature in 2020 confirmed what herbalists have long known. Althea officinalis is effective at treating dry coughs. Recent research has also shown it to have mild antitussive qualities, but I never think of it as something used to suppress a cough, but rather as something to support hot and dry lung tissues that then help to resolve the cough. An interesting in vitro study concluded that teas made from marshmallow are effective stimulators of cell physiology of epithelial cells, which can prove the traditional use of marshmallow preparations for treatment of irritated mucous membranes within tissue regeneration. Marshmallow for digestive inflammation. Marshmallow is almost always included in protocols for inflammatory problems in the digestive tract, such as ulcers, colitis, or even dry constipation. Besides being able to soothe inflammation, marshmallow root is also a vulnerary, helping to heal wounds within the digestive tract. A marshmallow infusion can also soothe the painful sensations of heartburn, but a more holistic protocol, such as dietary changes, astringents, bitters, and possibly antimicrobial herbs will also be needed to address the root cause. Marshmallow for skin health, including healing wounds and soothing burns. Marshmallow root benefits include being a powerful healer for the skin. It's long been considered a powerful topical treatment for wounds and burns. And in the past, it was called mortification root because of its ability to prevent gangrene. In addition to this historical use, modern day research is shedding light on marshmallows antimicrobial features. In a study which looked at 16 different herbs and their ability to address E. coli, a common gut and urinary tract infective bacteria, the researchers remarked that some of the results were unexpected. Althea officinalis affected microbial metabolism in spite of the lack of literature precedent. Well, King's American Dispensary, written in 1898, wrote, Externally, marshmallow root is very useful in the form of poultice to discuss painful inflammatory tumors and swellings of every kind, whether the consequence of wounds, bruises, burns, scalds, or poisons, and, when thus applied, had a happy effect in preventing the occurrence of gangrene. The infusion or decoction may be freely administered. Besides the roots, the leaves are also used as a fomentation or poultice to soothe rashes and other irritations of the skin. 
While herbalists commonly use cabbage leaves for easing the painful symptoms of breast engorgement during breastfeeding, marshmallow compresses, in addition to routine interventions like warm and cold compresses, have also been shown to improve breast engorgement. A 2021 pilot study compared the difference between an Althea officinalis cream and a hydrocortisone cream in children who had been diagnosed with atopic dermatitis. Marshmallow showed its healing abilities. The researchers concluded, the results of this pilot study showed that the efficacy of Althea officinalis 1% ointment in a decrease of severity is more than hydrocortisone 1% in children with atopic dermatitis. That's right, the marshmallow ointment outperformed the hydrocortisone. Preliminary research suggests that marshmallow may also protect the skin from UV damage. Other mallows. Marshmallow is in the Malvaceae. This family name is derived from the Greek word malake, which means soft. Almost all members of this family are used in similar ways to marshmallow. Members of the Malvaceae that you might be familiar with include Roselle hibiscus, Chinese hibiscus, Rose of Sharon, Cranberry, Hollyhocks, Common Mallow, Globe Mallow, Cotton, and Okra. Malva neglecta or Common Mallow is a European and Asian weed that commonly grows in North America and can be used very similarly to marshmallow. One study showed that common mallow had higher mucilage in the leaves and flowers than other similar plants, including Althea officinalis. To learn more about working with mallows medicinally, check out our book, Wild Remedies, which has an entire chapter all about mallows. How to identify marshmallow. Marshmallow, Althea officinalis, originally hails from Central Asia, but is commonly grown all over the world. It loves to grow in salt marshes and is an easy herb to grow in your garden. Marshmallow grows to about three to five feet in height, although you can see mine is quite a bit taller. It's a perennial herbaceous plant, meaning that it dies back in the fall and then reappears in the spring. Marshmallow flowers are pinkish to white and have five separate petals and many stamens. The stamens form a column around the pistil, giving it a distinct shape. One study showed that antioxidant levels were highest in the white flowers compared to the pink. The leaves are shaped like hearts with irregular serrations and they are covered with small, soft hairs. The leaves and flowers can be harvested in the late summer to early fall. You can usually get two harvests of the leaves from the plant. Just before it goes to flower, cut the stems a foot or so above the ground, leaving several inches of intact leaves in place. Depending on your growing season, the plant may branch and grow a second cutting of leaves. The roots are pale yellow color and are tapered long and thick. The roots are best harvested in the fall from the second or third year plants. They are chopped while they're still fresh and then dried. Older marshmallow plants may have tough woody roots that really aren't ideal for herbal medicine, which is why we like to harvest in the second or third year. Special considerations. Marshmallow is considered safe for everyone to use, although it's recommended to take it several hours away from taking prescription medications as it may inhibit or slow the absorption of the medications. Because marshmallow is so cooling and moistening, it's not advised to use it with conditions or people who are also cold and moist. If you're new to understanding herbal energetics and how to match people and plants using the indications of hot and cold and moist and dry, then check out my free Herbal Jumpstart course, which can be found in the video description or show notes. Marshmallow Root Tea Recipe. As mentioned, marshmallow root is very demulcent and high in polysaccharides, which makes it best prepared as a water infusion rather than extracted with alcohol or even vinegar. However, unlike most herbal teas, marshmallow root is revered as a cold infused herb, meaning you don't even need to heat the water to make it. To make this tea, you'll need one ounce or 28 grams of mallow or marshmallow roots and about two cups of room temperature water. You can add the roots to a glass jar and then add the water and then give it a good stir. You wanna let this sit for a minimum of four hours but preferably overnight. Marshmallow roots are high in both polysaccharides and starches, 
By using a cold infusion, you extract mainly the mucilaginous polysaccharides that are the demulcent constituents of the herb. If you simmer the root to make a decoction or use hot water, then you'll extract the starches in the plant. The cold infusion is considered to be a more pure extract of the mucilage of marshmallow. If you'd like to learn more about how to make potent herbal medicines from the plants that grow around you, whether they be in your garden, wild meadows, or even your local apothecary, then check out our course, Rooted Medicine Circle. In this live 10 month course, we create herbal medicines throughout the seasons together. And at the end of it, you have an entire apothecary filled with potent herbal medicines that you made. Okay, we've covered a lot about marshmallow. And my success is seeing your success, which is why my team and I have created two gifts for you in your herbal journey. The first is a beautifully illustrated marshmallow ebook with all the information I just shared. And secondly, don't miss out on your free printable recipe card for this marshmallow root tea recipe. If you're watching on YouTube, then you can click on the link in the video description. Or if you're listening to the podcast, go directly to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Also in the video description and show notes, I've included other helpful links like where you can buy marshmallow as well as both of my books. If you enjoyed this video on marshmallow root benefits and you value trusted herbal information, then I hope you'll stick around. The best way to get started is to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. One of the best ways to retain and fully understand something you've just learned is to share it in your own words. With that in mind, I invite you to share your takeaways with me and the entire Herbs with Rosalie community. You can leave comments on my YouTube channel, on the herbswithrosaliepodcast.com show notes page, or simply hit reply to my Wednesday email. I read every comment that comes in and I'm excited to hear your herbal thoughts about marshmallow root benefits and this marshmallow root tea recipe. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks. And I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes, and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. Okay, you've made it to the end, which means you get a gold star and this herbal tidbit. For many of us, the word marshmallow immediately makes us think of campfires, graham crackers, and chocolate. And you're right. Marshmallow was originally the plant used to make marshmallows before we ended up with the modern corn syrup version. However, unlike modern day marshmallows, the original marshmallow wasn't just a sugary treat. Instead, it was deeply healing food. The roots of marshmallow are especially high in nutrients and the young leaves and flowers are tasty in salads. Marshmallow root can be used similarly to slippery elm for people who are weak and unable to eat many foods, as might be found in convalescence or during cancer treatment. Hatfield Botanical Pharmacopeia wrote this about marshmallow in 1886. In pulmonary consumption and other wasting diseases, it is one of the finest strengthening medicines to which employment can be given, possessing so much nutriment that it may, with propriety, with the addition of milk be taken as a food, agreeing with and remaining in the stomach when that organ has become intolerant of other foods.